This part comes in two versions. One is maths heavy, one is maths light. If you're weird and would prefer the maths heavy version, an annotation should be appearing somewhere on your screen. At the end of the last part, we left Schrodinger reading the thesis of Louis de Broglie, wherein de Broglie outlined his theory of electron waves, which would lead to the idea of matter waves. In a November 1925 letter to Albert Einstein, Schrodinger wrote, I have been intensely concerned these days with Louis de Broglie's ingenious theory. It is extraordinarily exciting, but still has some very grave difficulties. A week later, at a seminar on de Broglie's thesis, an audience member suggested that there should be a wave equation, and, shortly afterwards, Schrodinger had derived his wave equation, a quantum wave equation which determines the behaviour of these matter wave wave functions. One form of his wave equation can be derived from the classical wave equation, second order partial differential with respect to x of psi xt equals 1 over v squared times the second order partial differential with respect to t of psi xt. Assuming that the solution is going to be a standing wave, then substituting the equation for a standing wave into equation 1, carrying out the differential and cancelling, we get second order differential with respect to x of psi x equals minus omega squared over v squared times psi x. From this, using the wave equation from Louis de Broglie, along with equations for waves, kinetic energy, and the knowledge that the total energy is the potential energy plus the kinetic, we can now obtain the time-independent Schrodinger equation. We end up, after some substitution and rearranging, with this. Open brackets omega over v close brackets squared equals 2m over h bar squared times open brackets e minus u close brackets. Noting that open brackets omega over v close brackets squared is equal to omega squared over v squared, we can simply substitute this into the classical wave equation to obtain the time independent Schrodinger equation, which is second order differential with respect to x of psi x equals minus 2m over h bar squared times open brackets e minus u close brackets times psi x. This equation is time independent as it contains no time term and so is only valid for stationary waves. Schrodinger derived his equation differently, but this is, to the best of my knowledge, the outline of a valid derivation. The time-dependent Schrodinger equation is IH bar times partial differential with respect to T of psi xt equals open brackets minus H bar squared over 2m times second order partial differential with respect to x plus ux close brackets times psi xt. These equations can be utilised to calculate the probability density or where we might find the particle. It has not been shown to be false as of yet. So does the wave function psi x actually represent anything oscillating? Oddly, no it doesn't. What it represents is the most complete description that can be given to a physical system. It contains all the information on the system, information that can be released via the right mathematical manipulation. In the next part, we will look briefly at quantum mechanics and briefly discuss Schrodinger's equation before following Schrodinger through the late 20s and early 30s. Thanks for watching.